Okay, now we'd like to look at slightly more complicated equations called two-part equations, where we might have to both add and or subtract, or multiply and or divide both sides of an equation by something. We also might need to combine like terms on each side, use the distributive property, and we'll look at a couple examples. But first, let's remember these basic ideas of what the way we would go about doing this. The first thing we would typically do is simplify each side of the equation as much as possible, use the distributive property, combine like terms, and so forth. If there are fractions or decimals, we might multiply both sides by the LCD of all the denominators, the smallest number which they all evenly divide. Or we might multiply both sides by 10 or 100 to get rid of any decimals. Each of these operations makes it a little bit easier to do the rest of the problem, and they, are called, they yield equivalent equations, meaning that they have the same solution as the original equation did. So the next thing we would do after we do that is to try to move things from side to side so that we would isolate, get all the terms, which are things added and subtracted from each other, get all the terms on one side which have a variable in them and combine like terms, and then get all the terms on the other side which do not have a variable and combine like terms as much as possible. And then once we have the variable term all alone on one side, we would then divide by its coefficient. So take 2x perhaps and divide by, say take 2x equals 6, and we saw this before, and divide both sides by 2. and that would yield <coughs> x equals 3, as we would expect. Of we would then, of course, check all of our solutions, or any solution, to make sure that it actually does work. Now let's look at an example. We have one up here. It's 6x, 6x minus 4 equals 2x minus 8. So what would we do first? Well, suppose I decide, well, 6x is bigger than 2x, so I'm going to get all the x's on the left. So the first thing I might want to do then is subtract 2x from both sides. So I'll do that, 6x minus 4 <coughs> minus 2x is equal to 2x minus 8 minus 2x. Right, combining like terms, then I have 4x minus 4 is equal to, notice this is negative 8 left on the right side. So it's that negative sign right there is up above the negative 8 is still there. So the next thing, what would I do next? I'd add 4 to both sides, then 4x minus 4. Uh, plus 4 is equal to negative 8 plus 4. Now combining the like terms, I'm left with 4x on the left side is equal to, what is that, negative 4 on the right side. And the next thing I would do is divide both sides by positive 4. So 4x over 4 is equal to negative 4 over 4. So we're saying x equals negative 1. As we said, let's go ahead and check over here. Checking, then that would mean I'd start with the original equation, 6 times negative 1. I'm plugging in 4x four, four in the original equation, negative 1. 6 times negative 1 minus 4 is supposed to equal 2 times negative 1 minus 8. And here this is negative 6 minus 4 is equal to negative 2 minus, minus 8. And so we have negative 10 equals negative 10, 
which checks. So yes, that is a solution. There's our solution. X equals negative 1. Okay, now we'd like to take a look at another example where we do have some parentheses, parentheses and things. And so this next example is 17 times the quantity s plus 3 is equal to 4 times the quantity s minus 10 plus 13. So the first thing I would do is multiply both sides by use the distributive property separately on both sides, I mean, in order to simplify both sides. So on the left side, we'd get, we'd get 17s plus, well, 3 times 17, what is that? 34, 51 plus 51 is equal to 4s minus 40 plus 13. So next, I'll combine, there are some like terms over on the right-hand side, so I'll combine those. 17s plus 51 is equal to, there we go, 4s, what is that going to be? Minus 27, minus 27. All right, so now we're back to an an equation like we had in the last example. And again, because 17s is bigger than 4s and both are positive, I'll subtract 4s from both sides. So 17s plus 51 uh, minus 4s is equal to 4s minus 27 <clears throat> minus 4s. And now combining the like terms, I get 13s plus 51 is equal to, again, we're left with a negative, negative 27. And here, then, I would like to subtract 51 from both sides. So 13s plus 51 minus 51, so I'm trying to isolate the term with the variable in it, equals negative 27 minus 51. I'm subtracting 51 from both sides, and I'll combine like terms. That leaves over here on the left just 13s, which was our intermediate goal. And that equals, well, what is <coughs> that? That looks like negative 78, negative 78. So then we're, what will we do next? We'll divide both sides by that 13. So 13s divided by 13 is equal to negative 78 divided by 13. It turns out that that goes evenly in there, and we get s equals, or we think we get s equals negative 6. Once again, we'll try to check this. Let's see, check our check process, and what do we do? We plug negative 6 in for s in the original equation every place that s was. So we start with 17 times the quantity negative 6 plus 3 equals 4 times negative 6 minus 10 plus 13. Now, combining like terms inside the parenthesis like we did before, 17 times, what would that be, minus 3 is equal to 4 times minus 16 plus 13. So on the, <coughs> excuse me, left-hand side we have negative 51 equals negative 64 plus 13, and negative 64 plus 13 over here is actually negative 51, so negative 51 equals negative 51, and yes, our solution checks. So over here at the bottom of the left side over here, S does equal negative 6, and that's the solution to the equation.